Good afternoon to everyone. I'm Dr. Kasem, and I am tasked to report on Chapter 20, New Means of Data Collection and Accessibility. And these are my objectives. As an introduction, public health is a data-driven field. It relies on accurate, timely, and comprehensive data for decision-making, policy development, and implementation of health interventions. Data collection and accessibility are fundamental to the practice of public health informatics because it enables the monitoring of health status, identification of community health problems, and evaluation of health programs and services. The rapid expansion of health information technology has brought about new means of data collection and accessibility transforming the management of data and information in public health. If we say public health data, this is any data pertaining to the health of populations. It helps in understanding the health of a population, identifying disparities, and determining the resources needed to address these health issues. These are the three classes of public health data we have the individual data. So if we say individual data, this is a data based on the clinical encounter in the primary care sector or data obtained from the delivery of preventive healthcare services to clients by programs operated by local health departments. It is identifiable data and is considered protected health information or PHI under the HIPAA rule. An example is a patient's medical record from a primary care visit, including information on diagnosis, treatments, and patient outcomes. The second class of public health data is the aggregate data. If we say aggregate data, this is information on individuals that has already been processed in some way to derive additional information. This information may become a data input to another research or analytical process. An example would be data on the prevalence of a specific disease like those in malignant neoplasms in a county or a country combined with injury data and other information to contribute to a composite score or ranking of the comparative health of a country. And lastly, we have the community level data. This is data related to the ambient conditions that may influence health. It includes data that may have an effect on the entire community, including social and economic factors, quality or availability of medical services, and factors likely to impact the accessibility of healthcare. An example would be data on lead levels in the soil at various sites within a community. We have also the median income of individuals or groups in a population, or even the number of family practice physicians available to serve the community. It is also important to note the 10 essential services of public health. The first is to monitor health status to identify community health problems. Second, diagnose and investigate health problems and health standards in the community. Third, Inform, educate, and empower people about health issues. Next, mobilize community partnerships to identify and solve health problems. Fifth, develop policies and plans that support individual and community health efforts. Sixth, enforce laws and regulations that protect health and ensure safety. Seventh, link people to needed personal health services and assure the provision of health care when otherwise unavailable. Eight, assure a competent public health and personal health care workforce. Ninth, evaluate effectiveness, accessibility, and quality of personal and population-based health services. And lastly, research for new insights and innovative solutions to health problems. What are the importance of data systems? So we have different types of data systems commonly used. So first, we are aware now of the immunization registries. These are implemented with the goals of achieving and maintaining high rates of immunization 
by ensuring that infants and children receive appropriate vaccinations at the recommended intervals. Then, we have also cancer registries. These are used to collect and organize data on neoplasms and follow-up cancer patients. Third, we can have also trauma surge registries, which consists of databases on patients who have received severe injuries. Then, we also have birth defect reg registries, which collect information on newborns with birth defects. And of course, we have also diabetes registries, wherein we collect data about patients with diabetes in order to assist them in the management of their care as well as for research purposes. Much of this data is collected from the outpatient clinics. Then, for orthopedics, we have also implant registries. It tracks the performance of implants, including complications, deaths, and defects resultants from these implants, as well as longevity. Then we have also transplant registries. Maintain databases of patients who need organs such as kidney. Now, in terms of evolving methods for data collection in public health, so we would now try to differentiate the current methods, the uh, evolving methods. So for the current methods, we have the traditional methods for data collection in public health. We are familiar with these ones including surveys, interviews, focus group or focus group discussions, direct observations, and even review of existing data sources such as our health records, disease registries. These methods have served public health well, providing valuable data that informs public health actions. Then, of course, we have now the future methods. Because of the advent of health information technology, it has brought about new methods for data collections. As we all know, the advent of our electronic health records, which includes the hospital information systems. We also have the mobile health or the mHealth technologies. The wearable devices, okay, your uh, uh, Apple watches that, can, uh, that has a, a cardiac rate or a pulse rate uh, monitoring. Then, we, of course, you have now your Internet of Things devices. These technologies can provide real-time, high-resolution data that can enhance public health surveillance and intervention efforts. So, as we transition or as we move from current to the future methods, it is important to note and it is crucial to ensure the quality, privacy, and even more so, the security of our data. It's also important to address issues related to data standardization and interoperability to maximize the utility of collected data. Now, what is the role of information systems and health IT in the data collection? So, the need for information systems are crucial for data collection in public health. So, we all know, already know that. The, because they provide a structured and efficient way to collect, store, retrieve, and use data. They enable public health professionals to monitor our health status, identify health problems, then develop and implement interventions as well as evaluate their effectiveness. Health IT also has revolutionized data collection in public health. As I have said, these electronic health records allow for the collection of comprehensive health data in real time. So, we are talking here with big data. Mobile health technologies also enable data collection outside of traditional healthcare settings, reaching more people and collecting more diverse types of data. So, we can also consider your mobile applications, your uh, fitness apps, okay, and uh, uh, others. So, what are the benefits of this high health IT? It can improve the timeliness, accuracy, and completeness of data since it, we can have a real-time uh, data that can be analyzed also in real-time. It can also facilitate data sharing and collaboration among different healthcare providers and public health agencies. Some of the 
uh, apps or the uh, applic or the mobile applications have the capability of uh, sharing data between patients and your doctors. Then we now have to foster partnerships in public health through health IT also. So the need for partnerships. So in the book, it states that the Institute of Medicine report titled The Primary Care and Public Health, Explore, Exploring Integration to Improve Population Health. It said that it highlights the need to integrate and align healthcare delivery more broadly. But one of the challenges is obtaining data needed to support public health surveillance activities from independent sources outside the traditional public health system. Since we all know that data in healthcare is a very sensitive personal information according to their data privacy policy. So it's not easy to uh, let someone uh, get your data. It needs a uh, even a ethics review or even permission from the legal department of your institution. So health IT, including those I have mentioned and other digital tools, can facilitate also partnerships between the primary care and public health sectors, more so with our with the advent of the healthcare providers network. This is very crucial in uh, in, in in implementing policies regarding the HCPN. These technologies can enable data sharing and collaboration. Uh, enhancing the ability to monitor health status, identify health problems, and implement interventions, such as in our case in ITRMC, uh, the implementation of our hospital information system and the implementation of the same uh, information systems from uh, different uh, pilot uh, district hospitals. It enables the district hospitals to directly um, to directly uh, refer patients through the use of the hospital information system already. And uh, once the patient was transferred, okay, the ITRMC were already notified in advance. Then we have also these regional extension centers. It is established in the High Tech Act can assist hospitals and clinicians in implementing EHRs. We have also public health agencies can uh, establish partnership across healthcare delivery systems. As I have said, in the case of Philippines, no, uh, we have the uh, healthcare provider network. Okay, so we're in our hospital is a part of the network. Uh, it it acts as the apex center or the refer and referral center of the province of La Union. Then we have also this one, the accountable care organizations or the ACOS. So this can be uh, used in partnerships. So the Affordable Care Act establish incentives to create ACOS which aim to incentivize the provision of highly coordinated care for patients and improve health outcomes for population. ACOS align the goals of public health with those of primary care and rely heavily on technology to create integrated care systems. How do we transform now public health with these new tools and technologies? So as we have said, we have the emerging technologies already, okay, that can transform data management in public health because uh, these uh, emerging technologies here usually has already the capability of even machine learning uh, based uh, data analytics or the predictive analytics or even AI generated or AI driven uh, healthcare solutions. Then the application into the bioinformatics and public health genomics development such as bioinformatics pose acute, acute challenges to maintaining privacy and confidentiality as does the use of powerful computing technology support for decisions about interventions. We have these new genetic technologies you know, that has have spawned an emerging field, public health genomics, engaging the nature versus nurture debate in new ways. Then, as uh, we have already been introduced from our previous uh, lectures, uh, HIE, or Health the Health Information Exchange, okay, the implementations are accelerating the growth and future potential of public health informatics. It is crucial for public health officials, programs, okay, of these uh, government hospitals, their long-standing partners or stakeholders, 
and even our PPPs or the public-private partnerships to drive cross-programmatic data and system and coordination, integration, and new development efforts. Now, we have also this cloud-based computing, which is a trend nowadays. So, recent developments in remotely hosted hardware and software. Example, cloud-based computing and software as a service. So, Mo, uh, I hope you are familiar with your Google, your Google Cloud, which consists of your Google Drive, which consists of the Google Docs, Google Slides, and so on and so forth. Okay, because of this, even the Microsoft Office 365, that's already a cloud-based. So because of this, they have made it easier for local health departments to gain access to technology that was previously only affordable for much larger organizations. In the context of this uh, COVID-19 pandemic, still up to now, uh, with the... Uh, with the uh, uh, implementation of the third booster of the bivalent uh, Pfizer vaccine, the DOH opted still to use cloud-based uh, uh, system to collect data of those uh, of the different vaccination sites, no, for, uh, through Google Sheets and Google Forms. Now, of course. Uh, uh, new technologies or digital technologies has some barriers uh, for adoption. Okay, Despite the potential of this health IT, public health continues to lag in its investment in new infrastructure. So these are the common challenges. So of course, you have your maintaining privacy and confidentiality, ensuring data quality, and addressing issues of data standardization and interoperability. Okay. So if we say, uh, as we all know, privacy and confidentiality, so we have the, the strict uh, implementation of the Data Privacy Act of 2012. Uh, if you read the Data Privacy Act of 2012, so the penalties imposed uh, either fine or worse is imprisonment. Okay, so there is one hospital already that was... Uh, uh, that was guilty of this one. No? They they paid that. I, I think it's about two million pesos, because uh, uh, there is a data breach in their system. Okay. Then ensuring data quality. Of course, uh, uh, we all know that raw data is uh, in real life. Raw data is messy. Okay, so as the best practice here is that as uh, uh, as early as in your data collection, you should have a uh, very good data collection tool so that you will have your data quality. Because uh, uh, we should always clean our data before analyzing it. Okay, so never never analyze your data. If uh, it is not clean, meaning you did not remove your blank uh, or your null values or, or this one, the third one, the addressing issues of data standardization. Like, for example, each uh, data source can have different formats for your, uh, let's say, for example, your birthday. One system could mean... Uh, month day year for the birthday other system can have day month year so if this date two data sources were put together okay it should be cleaned okay so it should there should have uh, a a single format to use and if we say interoperability each system should have an access or should be able to talk to each other okay like for example your uh, Hospital information system should talk to your uh, PACS or your picture archive, uh, okay, your radiologic information system or your laboratory information system. Because if they are not interoperability, interoperable or they have different or they were developed uh, through different uh, programming languages such as you know, the other one was developed through Python or the, uh, while the other one was developed for the PHP, so it's we we therefore uh, uh, 
accept that they cannot be uh they cannot uh, operate no they cannot operate uh, uh seamlessly so however there are certain solutions like your api no the, or the third party okay where these two softwares or the or these two systems talks to each other then of course there is a rapid expansion of health it okay new technologies like our i have said the cloud based computing and softwares as a service have made it easier for health departments okay so you just need your you just have to have your internet connection okay then uh you don't need to uh, save it in your local hard drive. Furthermore, if your computer crashes or uh, cannot access it anymore, okay, it uh, the risks of this uh, can be mitigated since it is already in the cloud. But of course, uh, as we say, as we have said, cloud-based also is more expensive, okay, in the long run. So, how do we leverage existing programs to overcome barriers? So, like for example, the regional extension centers and the accountable care organizations, you know? so or the private par uh, private public partnerships. So, these are the proposed solutions. Public health organizations are advised to opt for investment in newer, more accessible technologies when opportunity rises. This can help efficiently. Utilize scarce resources, align with key stakeholders in the healthcare delivery system, and better serve the community. Now, data uh, due to the cloud computing, it enhanced our data accessibility, as I have said a while ago. Because data accessibility is crucial in public health. Because due to this, it allows for the efficient use of data for surveillance, research, education, and inform informing the public. Okay, so if you want to have research, okay, you can source uh, your data sets so from public domains such as the the most famous is the Kaggle website. No, you can if you want to uh, if you want to manipulate data, okay, like predictions, okay, like like diabetes predictions or you have also your stroke predictions heart failure predictions in Kaggle you you can there is uh, there are available data sets for you to work on no uh, for you to analyze for you to have your descriptive statistics your correlation correlational analysis and even your inferential statistics then, of course, the use of information and communication technology has also increased the number of potential sources for use in public health processes. But, of course, as I have said, health data is very difficult to obtain. It needs special permission from uh, your legal team or even in research ethics. Because, as we all know, uh, even the age, sex, okay, the race, okay, all of that is, is sensitive personal information under the Data Privacy Act, okay? Okay, so cloud computing, it provides an on-demand. If you, if you say on-demand network access, okay, since it is in the cloud, so it, it consists of multiple servers, so you can also have... Uh, 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 multiple servers in multiple locations. Okay. So it has five sense essential characteristics. We have the on demand self service, the broad network access, resource pooling, rapid elasticity, and measured service. So it can be, uh, expanded. Okay. So cloud computing can make data easier to access and can be scaled. So that's the right term. It can be scaled to fit the organization, but it depends. You can scale servers vertically or you can uh, scale servers horizontally. Okay. It depends on your, on the databases that is being used in the server. So if you, if you, if you, for example, if you use your uh, SQL databases, okay, you, it, you can expand it uh, vertically. Okay. But if you use your NoSQL databases, you can expand it horizontally. So it's easier for it to span. You don't need 
to invest in multiple uh, servers. And also, it il also eliminates silos or uh, if you say silos, it's compartments. Okay? And reduces the need for extensive IT infrastructure. So, that's one of the disadvantages. You, know? you, you need to have a very good extensive in IT infrastructures because these cloud computing servers you know, needs uh, a very... Uh, very uh it's it it need it mean you need a maintained temperature no so like for example there are the google servers uh uh, uh were stored no under under the sea so they even have this uh so they even have this uh uh data warehouses no under the sea Okay, so because they can, uh, they can maintain the, 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 the coolness of the environment, no? So that they will, uh, decrease their expenses, no? Such as expenses for air conditioning, the warehouses, okay? So we have also the deployment models. The effectiveness of cloud computing for public health data accessibility depends on the type of data potential stakeholders, and reporting requirements. Different deployment method models can cater to different types of data availability like your public, private, community, and hybrid clouds. So, if hybrid clouds, it's the combination of your public, private, and community clouds. So, what is the practical use? So, shared governance with the same security standards would apply to the community model. So, as, as, uh, I hope you are aware of the software as a service or the SaaS, which can use to consolidate public health reporting and data aggregation, making a practical solution for public health data accessibility. Okay, so in summary po, public health data needs. Okay, there is a need for our public health data. So, public health data is essential for the effective functioning of public health services, not only the private uh, sectors. It can be categorized into individual, aggregate, and community level, each serving unique purposes in healthcare. So, you have your data collection methods, your traditional and mo modern methods of data collection. The traditional means most of them or even use manual, no? Manual or, or, or if you say this, uh, the paper, the paper is the traditional or you can also have your Google form. And your modern methods, as I have said a while ago, is by the use of the health IT, such as your uh, mobile health and your Internet of Things. Wherein, uh, one example of Internet of Things is your uh, uh, different uh, electronic health records in the cloud or your devices that uh, is connected to the Internet, like your uh, your... What's this one? Your Siri, like that one. So, the future promises even more advanced system supporting data collection. So, the role of health IT, including information system, is crucial for efficient data collection. It also fosters partnerships between primary care and public health sectors. So, these new emerging tools and technologies have the potential to transform data management in public health care, enhancing effectiveness and efficiency and effectiveness. However, of course, you have your barriers and challenges, okay, as I have said early, uh, a while ago. So, the number one challenge they, here is your data security and privacy, okay, and also your uh, interoperability, data standards, and so on and so forth. Then, the beauty of your uh, cloud computing, okay, it uh, plays a significant role in enhancing the, this accessibility. Okay, so that's all. So thank you for listening, uh, everyone. Thank you.